Hi guys, so today I'm going to do a little chit chat, skincare, chit chat, life, chit chat with you guys about, you know, what's going on with me. A little bit, just a little bit, not a lot, just a little bit. But before we get into that, I want to check out my new Dossier perfume with you guys to see what it smells like. Alright, you guys notice that I have been posting them um, in a lot of my videos when I do post because I am a Dossier ambassador. So, cool, right? And it's early, by the way. That's when the house is really quiet. Everyone's asleep. So this is why I'm trying to do this right now. <laughs> Unless, you know, you guys prefer baby crying in the background and kids screaming. Okay? Alright, you guys, before I show you the Dossier perfume, just, just listen, listen. everyone sleeping <laughs> that's why I'm filming so lucky you and lucky me so we're gonna try and get this done before the natural sounds of my house awake okay all right so as usual you get your dossier perfume in a box like this and from my past videos you guys know that you always get a sample with dossier their perfumes are made in Paris and they make their version of the high-end brands that some of us love okay and can't live without me on the other hand like i'm you know i'm pretty frugal i like to say cheap but i'm pretty frugal with perfumes if i buy something that's high-end i'll keep it for years and sometimes you know the smell will faint over the years sometimes and then paying 65 dollars and, and 75 dollars and 100 dollars for a bottle of perfume especially when you're a mother of four is just mm, no but with Dossier, you can get the same smelling perfume in a beautiful bottle, like that one, for $29, $39, but you won't be paying $75, $65, no. And then the great thing about Dossier is that the more you buy, the more benefits you get, basically. Like, you'll get a discount from purchasing more than one perfume, okay? I believe it's 20 to 30% off, depending on how many bottles you get. And then you also get a sample size with each perfume you get so that you get to try the perfume out before you really commit to it. Try the sample. It's about 30 days worth of a sample. Try it. See if you like it. If you don't like it, send it back. They don't have a problem. Nothing at all. So, all right. I feel like someone swept my sample already from this one. Or was it me? There's supposed to be a sample in this box and I think my husband took it. I think he took it. Um, Picasso is pretty obsessed with the Dossier perfumes and he has one in his truck. He has one on his side. Hold on guys. He has one on his side of the dresser. So when he comes out the shower, he sprays himself. Okay, so see this one, this one has it. So he took my sample. <laughs> He took my samples. This is a different box. This is for another video, but I wanted to show you guys. You do get a sample with each box, and you try the sample before you use the large bottle. Okay? Once you use the large bottle, you can't really return it. But that's why they provide a sample. It's the same perfume that's in the big bottle. Use it. See if you like it. You don't like it. Send it back. Okay? They're cruelty-free, paraben-free, all the bad things free. Okay? All right. All right, so let's see which one this is. This is Musky Rose, okay? Top notes are, oh, this is a big word. Osman, uh, Osmantus, Osmantus, Bergamot, Orange Blossom. Middle notes, Rose, Peach, and Jasmine. Base notes, Musk, Patchouli, and Oak Moss, okay? So this is a 50 ml bottle, I believe. Yes, this is a 50 ml bottle, and you get the little sample like I just showed you, and you try that first. I don't even have to spray this. Oh my gosh. This is going to put me in a happy mood because this week has been mentally rough and draining for me. I've been dealing with like a lot of personal things. You know, I'll talk to you about it. But this perfume about to make me feel real good right now. Hold on. Oh god, that smells so good. It smells like... I can't say the word. But it smells like... I don't know what to say on YouTube nowadays. Like, you're gonna get 
demonetized for this and that. Like, I don't even know what to say. Well, it depends on who you are, though, you know. Let, let, let's see how. Oh. Mmm. I like that. Yes. Okay. This is inspired by Narciso Rodriguez for her Eau de Parfum. Um, concentrate is 15%, and this smells amazing. Holy crap, I smell sexy as hell, and I look like mom right now. So, I'm just saying. If you guys get a perfume from them, get this. Oh my gosh. Oh, that smells so good. I gotta hide this one. And I'm not even being, like, crazy or exaggerating. Like, Picasso steals my stuff. Like, as far as, far as the perfumes. Like, you know, I, I, I would be concerned if he was stealing, like, my lip gloss and stuff like that. But my perfumes, he's taking them. And, no. Can't be all here... Being a trucker, smelling better than your wife. No, absolutely not. <laughs> Anyways, if you guys are interested in dosier perfumes, which I think you should be interested in dosier perfumes, you get more for your money. If you're going to pay $75 for one perfume, why not get three perfumes for the same price and plus a discount? And if you don't like it, send it back and get something else. Anyway, if you want to sign, if you if you guys are interested in dossier, if anywho, if you guys are interested in dossier, their information is down below. If I have a discount code, that is down below as well. Okay, check them out. I promise you'll like them. Okay, or love them because I do. All right. So, so um, you know, I told you guys that it's been like a super emotional week, and well, not week, weeks, weeks, months, um. I was in a car accident um, around my birthday, and then I'm you know I'm okay. My seatbelt didn't hold me back, so my my chest slammed into my steering wheel. While I talk, I'm gonna do my skincare because it's just not you know we don't have that much time. But um, you know my chest slammed into my steering wheel. Um, I actually had went onto the road to go get my husband some pain medication, and. Um, some pain medication because he had broken a bone in his foot that I figured that one out on my own because he was in terrible pain and couldn't walk so I was taking care of him and he was in pain and then you know he was just in, in, in a lot of pain basically and uh, I know I keep repeating that but it was it was horrible like horrible and I know he felt bad because he couldn't do anything for himself so um did I have lotion on the side of my face the entire time oh my gosh I'm sorry but um you know, I went out and a snowstorm was starting and as I pulled out of my driveway, I made it halfway down the road and I realized I forgot my wallet. So I said, okay, I'm going to go get my wallet. I was kind of pissed off because I didn't want to go out because a snowstorm was coming. You know, I did not want to go out and the thing he was asking me for was an oil that they do not sell where we live. I know they don't sell that where we live based upon the population <laughs> demographics okay it, they don't sell that here so he didn't want to listen to me and then he got upset and then I got upset and I was like okay I'm gonna just go get it if it exists but it doesn't but okay whatever so anyways I'm halfway down the road you know to go to the store to get this non-existent oil that I know is not there realize I forgot my wallet come back it's already snowing got in the house my daughter's like mommy what's wrong and because she could see that I was upset I was like nothing I was like, I just need my wallet. I took my wallet, left again, and as I'm driving to the store, I'm already sliding on the road with my truck. You know, I have a, I have a, a Chevy Tahoe. I love my truck. It's a 2012. I love my truck. I don't need, you know, the fanciest truck. I love my truck. So I'm sliding. I'm holding on. I'm like, okay, I got this. Whatever. I'm used to driving in the snow. Cool. Got to the store. The oil is not there. So I just got him some like, is it Ben Gay or like some type of pain medications and soothing patches and um, Sonop, whatever, Sonopause, whatever that crap is. I got him a bunch of stuff, okay? A bunch of stuff. The funny thing is while I was in the aisle, and this was like a little later towards the day, but it wasn't like super late. It was like 8 o'clock at night, okay? And it was a snowstorm, so there was almost no one in the store. Everyone was home as they should be home, you know? And I'm in the, the pharmacy section where all the medications and stuff, pain meds are. And then this guy comes in and he's standing there just staring. I'm like, okay, this is creepy. And he's like not doing nothing. He's just like kind of waiting for me to leave, it felt like. 
So I was looking, I'm like, what the fuck? Get oh, I can't curse. So I was looking like, what is what does he want? You know, because it's just me and him in the store and the cashiers. So I get my stuff, I leave, and then I kind of glance over to see where he went. He went straight to like the condom section. So I was like, oh, I made you nervous. It's okay. <laughs> it's natural. I wanted to say that so bad. Like the mom and me wanted to be like, it's okay. It's natural. <laughs> I paid for my stuff, got in my car, and I started driving home. Let me see, two minutes into my drive, I started sliding again, right? So I'm holding on to my car, trying to, you know, keep control. I'm only doing like 10 miles an hour, okay, in a 45 lane, 10 miles an hour. My tire caught, by the way, this is a makeup wipe, and um, some micellular, whatever, miracus, whatever water this is. <laughs> My tire caught some black ice that was under snow and just could not get right. And I was trying to control my car and I just started like weaving, weaving, weaving. And then I saw a car coming towards me. I'm on the right side, the car's on the left coming towards me. So I'm holding my tire and I just turned it to the right. I was like, you know, if I crash, I don't want to crash into this car. There could be people, obviously people, but children, you know, whatever. Somebody in there, someone's going to get hurt. So I'm trying to keep my car to the right because it was doing like this situation. <clears throat> so holding my car to the right and it just held on to the ice and I lost steering. My wheel was just spinning, like spinning. I was like, well, and I was like, I can't say that word, but you know what I mean? And I just braced myself ready for impact and my car just, just and then slammed and my chest went into my steering wheel. You know, and I'm not gonna lie, it hurt. It hurt a lot, and I was crying. I was, ugh, it was a hot mess. After I crashed, um, I kind of like blacked out, um, and then I came back, and then, um, you know, I was in the car, hysterical, crying. Um, I called Picasso. He didn't pick up. I'm like getting angry now. And then, um, by the way, that is um, astringent. Um, you can use witch hazel or any astringent brand you like, but um, yeah, so you know crying he didn't pick up So I called my neighbor. I told my neighbor what happened. I was crying on the phone. He's like, what happened Queenie? I told him I said I crashed um, He was like, where are you? I told him where I was. He came and got me But before he came and got me, I'm sitting in the car freaking out and then this big truck started coming up behind me I was like, oh my god, please see me because my truck is black all right, and it's a snowstorm now, full-blown snowstorm. I'm like, please see me, see me, don't crash it to me. Because you know sometimes when there's a crash in snow, you know, there's like a like a domino effect. And it was a snow plow, and he saw me, he stopped, he came to check on me, and I'm pretty sure I freaked him out with all my... <laughs> I was like freaking out. He was like, are you okay? I was like, yeah, I don't know, I crashed, oh my God. Like, I was very, 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 like, I don't know, my female hormones were like up there you know and he was like okay i'm just checking to see if you're okay and then my neighbor came he got me he's a police officer so he got me out he had a, cop lights in his like personal car had those things blasting everywhere was blue and red he stopped all the traffic and then um tow truck came got my truck and then that's when the fun part began so you know i thought my truck was fixable and um, they brought my truck to a mechanic. He made it drivable. But before I even got my truck, I had rented a car because I still needed a car. You know, I have children. I need a car every day. And I don't have no bus or anything like that. So, you know, rented a car. These people at this rental place gave me a two-wheel drive Suburban, Chevy Suburban, two-wheel drive with bald tires. When I got the car, it was snowing, so I didn't even like, you know, I'm, I'm assuming if you're going to give me a truck in winter, it's going to be something that can drive <laughs> in the snow. Got this truck. It, it was a nice looking, beautiful Suburban. It was a nice newer car, but it was useless. It literally sat in my driveway most of the time for about seven days. I ended up spending $500 on this car. That did nothing. And then when the... When the rep, 
This is the Acne Rebalancing Cream from Derma E. I love this stuff. Um, you guys see I have like this huge blemish here. Um, that's my fault. I ate a whole pack of cookies the other night. <sighs> Look, sometimes things happen, okay? Don't judge me. And it was the Samoa's cookies, so that's why. Anyways, um, so the representative, when he told me my rental rate for the day, he failed to mention that that the car was about $80 almost a day and that, you know, I was responsible for $35 or, or what was it, $36, something like that. But the way he said it, he didn't make it seem like the car was 80. He's like, the rental is 35 plus tax, blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, okay, oh, 35 dollars a day? Okay, cool. Because there's a snowstorm. Ain't nobody renting cars. So I thought it was like a deal or whatever. I figured, you know, it'll be a couple hundred dollars. And then by the time I returned the car back, I thought I was going to get my deposit back. Because some of these companies, you know, they take a deposit. They take a deposit when you rent a car. You know, I take a deposit when you rent a car and I'm thinking I'm getting my $300 deposit back. I called him. I'm like, hey, um, you know, I dropped the car off. When is my deposit going to come back? Because I need that. And he was like, oh, um, I was going to call you. There is a balance of $170. That's a balance of what? What, what does that mean? Tell me. <laughs> Yo, this dude hit me with the, oh, the rental was $87 or something like that. And I was like, excuse me? I said, that's not what you told me. I said, you told me my rental was $35, $36 plus tax, whatever. Because I'm like, I'm trying to remember everything, but it's not like 100, it's like 99% accurate. And he was like, oh, okay. I was like, because I'm telling him, I was like, you never once mentioned the entire rate. All you mentioned was $35 and my insurance covers $30. So I thought my responsibility was like five, six dollars. That's what I thought, you know, because I don't rent cars. So in, in my mind, you know what I mean? Like I already had enough going on. So like ex if you're going to rent a car to me, explain the whole thing, break it down. You know, he didn't show me papers of the rates or whatever. I just listened to him. I trusted him. I signed and boom, bop, bop, whatever. So... I'm like, you didn't do that. And then he was like, okay, okay, um, um, I'm going to see what I can do. He didn't call me back. And no one got the extra balance that I owed. Isn't that funny? I'm like, oh, you can make the balance disappear, but you can't give me my deposit back. Okay, cool. I was just kind of over it, like, with the whole car rental. And I paid my deductible, got my car back. I'm driving from the mechanic shop, right? In another snowstorm, I'm driving, and um, I notice my car is like, like it's literally like, okay, like I'm on this side, and this side is like, like I feel like I'm on a tilt. I'm like, what's wrong with it? Like, something's off. Like, this is the side that I hit, you know? So I'm like, mm, maybe, you know, something off. I came home, my tire in the front where I hit is flat. I check my tire, there is literal gravel and rocks and dirt in between my rim and my tire and all the air is coming out. How has my car been in the mechanic shop for this long and you guys didn't, you know what I mean? So then I had to drive back in snow, that's dangerous with a freaking flat tire, to have them clean it out and refill my car tire. Okay, cool. You think it's done, right? And it's not. <laughs> so this is um, anti-wrinkle treatment oil. But if you like wrinkles, that is fine. Um, if I can make my wrinkles look a little bit softer, I shall do that, okay? Um, so after a week of them, you know, of me having my car back, um, I went to go drive my car to go to the store. And as I am pulling out the driveway, I see something like go like like that in front of my windshield, like a black thing. I thought it was a big ass bird. I thought it was a big bird. It like flew past me. And then while I'm pulling away, I heard like a like a like a scraping sound. I stop the car, I come out. <laughs> my bumper fell off the car in my driveway. It fell off. Yeah. I just, I, I don't even know what to say. I'm like, wow. 
Wow, 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 wow. So I called my insurance adjuster. I told him what happened. Right? I said, the bumper fell off. <laughs> Thank, you know what? I must have been like blessed with the best insurance adjuster because this man had the most patience. He was super helpful. He wasn't like any other insurance adjuster that I've personally had to deal with. Like some of them were kind of, you know, want to totally car and get it over with. They don't care about you, but he was very caring. So, um, he was like, okay, we'll get it fixed. We'll get it fixed. You know, <sighs> we get, uh, he suggested a, an auto body company that he uses regularly, right? To do cars in the area where I live. So, you know, we, um, set up an appointment, whatever we went. They looked at the car, they're like, okay, you need a new bumper and you need a new headlight. I was like, yes, because the side where I hit, my headlight was still broken. They never fixed it. They just made my car drivable, right? Okay, cool. Bumper, headlight, cool. This is almost, almost, it feels like almost three months ago. Actually, yes, it's almost three months ago, we went to this body shop, right? And since then, I only got my car back about a week and a half ago. That's, only I, that's when I got my car back. Got my car back a week and a half ago. And since the, that time between when they looked at my car for a new bumper and headlight and when me getting my car, the amount of calls back and forth was interesting. I would call, hey, did you guys get the bumper? Can I make an appointment to fix my car? Like, I can't drive around like this. I actually ended up driving around like this for about two months plus, okay? And I, like sometimes the time gets away from me, like, but it's definitely been more than two months. I'm like, you know, my car inspection is expired. I'm driving around like this, like, what the hell? Oh yeah, this is the rep. She's like, yeah, the, the parts is gonna be in next week. Uh, I'm okay, cool. The part, and I, I call next week, oh, the parts is not here. It's gonna be here tomorrow for sure. Call tomorrow, uh, uh, um, you know, there's a delay, you know, um, Saturday, it, and it, it just kept on and on and on and on, right? So then my husband started to call. He was like, you know what, where are the parts? I'll go get it. He's a truck driver, he's like, I'm gonna go get the parts. And then she was like, no, it's okay, it's okay, whatever. And then I got kind of frustrated talking to this woman. Like I was trying my best to be like super calm and nice and respectful and all of that good stuff to her. Um, but like I was, I felt like I was being lied to, right? So I called her again. I'm ask, asking her for an update. I'm like, you know, did you guys get the parts? Did you did this? Did you? Oh yes, we got the bumper. We got the light. But now we're waiting for steering. Steering. I'm like, steering meaning what? Steering? I was like, I have been driving my car since I got to you guys. Do you think I could drive my car without... Look, wait, I didn't come to you guys for steering. I came to you guys to put my bumper on and put my headlight, my headlamp back and put it back on, right? And she's like, oh, well, I have this quote here, whatever. I was like, the quote never had the word steering there. The guy that looked at our car never even came in our car to look at steering. So what, what are you looking at? You know, I didn't say it like that, but you know what I mean? Like, what are you looking at? And then I was like, you know what? I'm gonna have my husband call you. My husband calls, she's like, oh yeah, we're waiting for steering and an airbag. <laughs> my husband called me, he's like, babe, he's like, this lying to us. I was like, I know she is. So I call my adjuster. He's thinking this entire time that my car is fixed. Two months later, I call him. I'm like, hey, um, this is Queenie, whatever. He's like, hey, he's like, how's everything? I was like, um, I'm still waiting to get my car fixed. He's like, what? He's like, I thought your car was fixed. I was like, no, I'm still waiting. So he's like, let me call them. He calls them. He's like, yo, what the hell? And he lit he's like, what the hell? And then they were like talking to him, whatever, whatever. Tell he and he called me back. He was like, "Oh, they're telling me all kinds of stories." I was like, "Yeah, they've been giving me stories too about why my bumper isn't here and why this." And then they're saying I need steering and I need an airbag. I'm like, "If I needed steering, why have I been able to drive my car for over two months without a bumper?" Okay, like come on, seriously, you know. So they finally, magically, had time to make my appointment. Then they got my car. <laughs> this is the best part. 
they got my car right and then the owner of the shop calls me and he was like hi is this queen i'm like yes he was like okay so you know i'm about to fix your car right and yeah the frame is bent the car is gonna have to be totaled yeah yeah this is an undrivable car the car has to be totaled so my car is undrivable yet i have been able to drive to multiple states with my car the way it looks okay cool Sure. So I say, like, can you just fix the bumper and the light? That is it. You know, and then I gave the phone to my husband because I was getting mad. And then he kept telling my husband, oh yeah, the car is going to be totaled. The car is going to be totaled. You know, I, I can fix the frame, but you know, if I fix the frame, it's going to be totaled, blah, blah, blah. Because you know, insurance, they're not going to pay more than the car is worth to fix the car. That's not how it works. And what happens is these body shops end up with the car and then they want to sell the car. That's what was explained to me by one of my mechanic friends. They basically just want cars to sell. My car is fixable and is valuable. Tahoe, Chevy Tahoes are, are very valuable cars. They're very popular cars. People still drive them around even though there are newer models. The model I have is a very popular model. Even the freaking politicians drive around enough. So <clears throat> my husband's like, you know, just put the bumper on. Just put the light on. Oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you, before he even got the car, before the body shop forgot, got the car, we were coming home one day. This was like two weeks before my car got to the bumper. My husband was driving and um, we were coming home, about to get into the garage. And usually, you know, if Picasso's kind of off on the space to get into the garage, I'll be like, hey, babe, you're too close. You're too this. You're too... And then he gets mad and he's like, babe, stop telling me how to drive. I know how to drive. And I'm pretty sure I'm not the only wife whose husband says this. So I saw that he was too close to the side of the garage. He was like here and the garage edge was here. And I, I was like, you know what? I'm not going to say nothing. I sat there quietly. He fell asleep for two seconds and stepped on the gas and smashed. <laughs> smashed in the fender and the light. Like the light was here and the fender was like holding it in place. Picture. <laughs> told you guys it's like a saga so it's just crazy how things work okay so let's go back to when I had my accident remember when I had my accident my neighbor picked me up that night when I was coming home there was this young boy driving in a pickup truck speeded my neighbor stopped and he was like hey and he knew the boy he was like hey slow down it's snowing and the kid I looked at him I'm like damn he looks he looks like I know him but I don't know him and he was like, oh, okay, cool, okay. And he was like, yeah, it's slippery. He was like, oh, yeah, for real? Like, he, you know, I was like, okay. And like, I was kind of out of it, but I was looking, you know. So then, all right, so let's go, let's go back to when my husband fell asleep and crashed into the garage side of the door, right? After that, we were driving. We had to go to the store with our car looking the way it looks. And... The same young man in his pickup truck saw us. He was like, hey, what happened to your truck? I said, life. He was like, life, huh? I was like, yep, life. He was like, you know, I could fix it. He was like, I work at such and such body shop. I was like, the same body shop that we were about to use. I was like, really? You could fix it? He's like, yeah, I could fix it. I was like, okay, come by the house. So come to find out the young man is Trinidadian. And then he found out where I'm from and he got all excited. He, <laughs> it, I'm telling you, things work in mysterious ways. So the fact that I saw that boy that night of my accident, randomly saw him only a few days after my husband mushed in the face of our car on the other side. <laughs> and he said he could fix it and he works at this particular body shop. Anyways, he's very talented. It took him nine hours, <laughs> but he took off the fender replace the fender. I bought it. By the way, I ordered a fender and a headlamp. I got it in four to five days. But, you know, the body shop took two months plus to get a headlamp and a bumper. Yeah. Even though bumpers were in stock on most of the sites. Yes. Anyways, um, so, yeah, so, um, you know, he fixed it. Uh, actually, we had a good conversation, whatever. Then he was like, you sound like my mom. <laughs> I was like, damn, <laughs> okay. Uh, he's like, you sound like my mom. 
when I was talking to him about like you know stuff and where we're from and stuff like that and I had him taste hot sauce well my pap my pepper sauce my pepper sauce and he's like oh that's good that's good shit he's like can I have some of that I think yeah he's like cause you know this area they don't they don't know what hot food is or whatever it's like yeah it's kind of mild it's more than mild. that shit is bland but anyways um gave him some hot sauce I made him some food I actually made him my honey mustard chicken there is a video for that on my cooking channel it's right here or down there and um yeah he was super super nice he did all the work on that side that my husband you know messed up and then the body shop put the bumper on and put the light on and he worked there but I told him I said yo don't tell them that you fix this he's like fix what I didn't fix nothing what do I know I don't know nothing <laughs> we paid him and we were gonna give him a toolkit but we paid him you know and prom and stuff coming up so he's a good kid he's a good kid and um i actually gave him a um a broad leaf or thick leaf time plant to give to his mom if you guys don't follow me on my gardening page i suggest you do um that's a way i've been trying to control my stress you know and i eat what i grow some you know for the summer especially and um yeah it's down there or here's a picture and follow garden of queenie <laughs> okay. is it garden of queenie or queenie of garden garden of queenie my husband picked that name. Anywho, you know, that's the saga of my car and getting my car back and everything. And, um, you know, they put the bumper on, they put the fender, the headlamp on. The young man, he did the fender and the headlamp. Got our car back. And then um, mommy, you know mommy, her husband, Opa, who has been in my life since 1996, um, got got kind of sick I would say um, from what has been explained to me um, it seemed like he had a mild stroke um, you know but it, it was very emotional the last two weeks the car was whatever but as far as his health that really like like hit me hard and like honestly yesterday I cried all day just all day just cried 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 all day everything cried everything and you know it's just it's a lot you know to see someone that you love that you've known for so long not able to do things for themselves but um <clears throat> hope as a strong man you know he's a strong Guyanese man I've always known him to be strong always you know always seen him just be strong and healthy I've never seen him sick I've never seen him cry you know, and I was talking to him on the phone, he was like, he said, the only reason I'm not crying to you in pain is because I'm a grown man. You know, he's one of those old timer men, you know, he's over 80, so he's, he's not one of those, he's going to be emotional. No, he's not going to do it. But he was, he, this was the most pain I think he has ever felt and I could hear it in his voice. But, um... You know, I paid and, and got him to the hospital. And the great thing about where I'm from, you know, people like to make fun of third world countries and things like that. You know, $100 got him a visit to the doctor, three medications that would last him about two weeks. And he also got what I believe is a steroid shot, I think, or some type of pain shot, okay? So he felt great after the shot or whatever he got. I'm not sure what it is. I, I'm thinking a steroid. I don't know. But he had swelling in the knees. His hand was shaking. He had like these lumps or something like on the back of his neck. And, and he said his head felt like it was going to explode. So, you know, one of my aunts is there and she was like, you know, it looked like he had a mini stroke. I explained the symptoms to my best friend. She was like, it's not like he had a stroke. So we're assuming he had like a mini stroke. He is an older man. You know what I mean? But um, he is starting to walk. He wasn't able to walk. Um, there was an incident where mommy was trying to help him go to the bathroom and they both fell down in the bathroom. You know, thank God she's okay. He's okay. Nobody hit themselves or hurt themselves badly. So, but it was stressful trying to find family to help her, you know. So one of my aunts, you know, I asked her, hey, you know, she's a great person. I asked her, hey, you know, can you... Well, first I asked her daughter, but her daughter's busy. And I asked her, she was like, yeah, I could do it, you know. And so she's with mommy right now. She's pretty much a live-in caretaker now. 
helping and since she's been there Opa has been doing better um, he actually went to feed the chickens yesterday and I had to yell at him I was like stay your butt in the house don't feed no chicken you know I had to tell him like Opa you gotta stay in the house you know I can go outside and go feed chicken them chicken them all right they're not gonna dead <laughs> you know and um, he's like okay 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 me listen me listen me go here me go here you know I'm like you lie he's like no 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 me not lie <laughs> It's so weird talking to you guys with this accent, but, um, well, with my real voice. You know, I usually use this right here. But, um, he's feeling better. His voice sounds better. He's eating. So, you know, and Auntie Mala's doing an amazing job taking care of him. Mommy's feeling better because she was stressing out. And, you know, she has high blood pressure. And I can't have both of them feeling sick. So, you know, if you guys can, just say a little prayer. Send out some little good vibes. They have been working. Um, if you follow me on my Life with Queenie page, you've seen the posts that I've made. I actually took them down because I was stressing myself out with my own posts. So, but um, thank you guys for those of you who sent out a prayer and positive thoughts for him. I think they're working. Okay. And yeah, you know, yesterday was hard. Yesterday was like really super emotional. I was supposed to film yesterday but I just could not do it and if I'm not in the right emotional state I am not gonna sit here and film anything and be like hi guys like <laughs> you know it's crazy so yeah that's life update you know and 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 hopefully some of the companies that I have sponsorships with actually sit down and watch this video which I think I don't think they will and understand why things um, have been pushed aside because I got stuff going on like you know like when my mind is occupied by real life situations I can't come on here and promote or whatever or review product no matter how much I like it you know so I have to be in a good place mentally for me to come and sit down here you know like dossier perfumes they smell freaking amazing you know but I just could not sit here and be like oh my god you guys because I was freaking crying all over the place yesterday now it's early in the morning everyone's still sleeping it's quiet my nerves are you know calm and neutral so it's good alright I hope you guys saw everything that I used <laughs> on my face I use the um, Derma E Anti Wrinkle Oil like around my eye area or on my mouth. I get very dry here. Okay. I also use the Derma E Acne Rebalancing Cream. This works really well for me personally. It has tea tree oil in here. Um, the Derma E Skin Restore. I really want to like this, but it makes me break out. It it um, it has peptides and collagen um, in it. It's a moisturizer, but it, it makes me break out. But I'm going to show you my favorite moisturizer ever. It is the Confidence in the Cream, and I've spoken about this in the past before. I emptied another jar. It's gone, and it's so sad. It's like a little... Put a little... Bit. <laughs> Put little. <laughs> this is definitely a, a treat for me. Like, to buy these, like, this is a, a treat, but... I absolutely love, love, love this moisturizer. It doesn't make me break out. It moisturizes my skin well, and my skin loves it, okay? <clears throat> I also like the Confidence in a Cream Rosy Tone. This is for aging skin, whatever. It, it moisturizes without being oily. So I use this mostly during, like, hot summer days, okay? Um, I also like, um, if you have, like, acne and pimples and things like that you could try the derma e and vitamin e oil treatment i like to put this like if i'm getting a little breakout i'll like put a little dab on it and it'll help with it okay and then to exfoliate i've shown you guys these before the pixie peel and polish which is almost gone or you can use this one's almost gone too the purifying daily scrub which i don't use daily i use maybe once a week um because sometimes when you exfoliate too much, your skin gets like thin and dry and it actually creates more wrinkles, in just my opinion. Okay, so um, those, are two, um, those are two scrubs that I like. And you can also do the um, Derma E. Hold on, I got it. Okay, alright. So you can also try the Derma E Microdermabrasion Scrub. This stuff is good stuff. I'll compare this. This is like the better version of the Pixie Peel and Polish. Or maybe same version yeah the same almost the same yeah okay and then there's the derma e instant radiant citrus facial peel i actually tried this on my husband and myself i love this stuff and it smells really really nice so just so you guys know, these are some of the things that i like to use um 
I wash, moisturize, what I just did in the video, I do that every day. And then some of the peels and scrubs I'll do once a week, twice a month, you know what I mean? Not too much of anything, too much of anything is not good. So just, a, just a, one scrub a week, two scrubs a week, and then one peel a month or one peel, you know, every three weeks or something like that. But um, yeah, I just wanted to give you guys some life. Uh, I just wanted to give you guys a life update, let you know what's going on, and hopefully, you know, you understand why I have been kind of, you know, not on here. And I kind of feel bad in a way that I've al I always have something going on, but it's life, you know. Instagram pictures I post is not like all of my life. If I post a picture of me smiling in my garden, that doesn't mean that I'm smiling in my garden every day. If I post a picture of me making something delicious or some food or whatever, and I'm so excited to eat it, doesn't mean that I'm happy every day. Like I'm a human being, I have feelings. I have sadness and happiness. I have highs and lows like everybody else. And bills and responsibilities and children and pets and, <laughs> and my own emotions and having to deal with them and having a new baby and pandemic and trying to feel like myself again you know like having a new baby is pr basically re restarting like over but anyways i'm very happy with all my children and the children the older children are happy with the baby she brings so much joy much needed joy to the house and calmness you know kinds of she kind of helps balances us balances us bleh, balances us out okay but um i'll see you guys soon all right i love you guys and i'll see you in another video bye